hey and welcome back to my channel it's Ashley here and if you are new hey girl hey so I'm super excited about this video today which is sponsored by Home Depot I am going to be sharing how I transformed this wall in our townhome this is actually gonna be part one of another video that's to come of the complete transformation of this space but today I'm just going to be sharing how I created this renter friendly wall. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So today I'm gonna start working on this wall back here. Um, this is technically my office space. Um, very little, but it works. And this is where I do most of my editing and all that stuff. So we're gonna make this space look cute, okay? Cause right now it's just like real plain, nothing going on and we're gonna fix that. So the first little project that I'm gonna do over here is the wall. So right now I'm gonna work on just creating like this cute little accent wall for this area. Just to liven this space up and it not look so bleh. So let me go ahead and start by cleaning up this area and then start measuring. So after I cleared this space out, of course, the next thing I did was start to work on the wall. So I already had some of these popular boards and they were perfect for this particular wall because I felt like if I used any of the other boards, they would have protruded out too much. And these were only a fourth of an inch thick, so it was perfect for this space. So I first sketched everything out onto my iPad to see how I wanted it to exactly look on this wall. And now after that, to visualize this even more, I just started to place these on the wall to see if it was actually gonna work out well, and it did. I also took some tape and I just taped it to the top so I can see how high these were going to be on the wall and if it was going to look right. After that, it was time to measure the wall. So I got my lovely husband to assist me and we measured the right side of the wall and then we measured the left side of the wall. So when I went to go get the big old sheet of plywood, I would know what I needed to get it cut down to. Next thing I did, of course, was take a lovely trip to Home Depot to gather all of the supplies that I need for this project. And then I got my guy, who's always there at night, cut my piece of wood down to the size that I needed, and then I gathered all the other materials that I needed to create this accent wall. So the next day, the objective was getting the sheet of plywood on the wall. So on the left side, it fit perfectly, but on the right side, I already knew that I was gonna have to cut the wood down a little bit more just so that it can fit in this area because of the little notch that was over on the right hand side. So basically I just got my measurements um, and then I started to mark off where I needed to cut with my jigsaw on this. Most people use plywood if they have like textured walls and um, they'll put the piece of plywood up. But for me, since we were renting, I was using it in that aspect so that I wouldn't have to paint on the actual walls. So I was trying to make this as renter friendly as possible. And I think I did a good job, but there's several different ways that you can get this done to make it renter friendly. So after I got the piece cut to where it's going to fit on this wall, the next thing that I started to do was use my stud finder to find the studs that I'm going to be nailing the piece of plywood to the wall with. So like I said, I tried to make this as renter friendly as possible and I decided to nail the piece of plywood to the walls. Now I didn't go crazy nailing the piece of plywood, so that's why I just picked a few areas that I wanted to nail when I found my studs. Another way that you can do this is using um, the mounting tape, like the removable mounting tape, but you have to know your walls, and I would really recommend you know, testing out an area to see if it's going to pull up that paint. I know these walls, and I know if I put any type of paint like that on there, it's gonna rip right off. So I was just like, I'm just gonna nail this to just a few studs, so that I'll be able to just pull this off the wall and remove the nails and putty them up. After I found and marked my studs, I thought I was ready to, you know, attach this baby to the wall, but I had a slight problem. I was pushing and pushing and pushing this onto my wall, trying to figure out why is this not being flush to the bottom, and it's because, duh, I had an outlet there. <laughs> totally didn't 
remember that I had an outlet there. So anyways, I had to cut that out. So what I did was I measured from the left and the bottom, which I also should have measured from the top and the right side too to get the exact measurement. So I know um, where I need to cut out my hole for my outlet. So once I marked that up and I traced around the outlet, I just took um, my drill and spade bit and I created a hole in the middle so that I'll be able to cut it out using my jig. So like I was saying, I should have measured from the top two and the right side because you wanna make sure you get the perfect measurement so you won't mess up your cut. So anyways, I knew that I could fix this, so I really didn't make a big deal out of it. Um, I just smoothed it out and moved on. So after I got that done, I can finally nail this to my wall. So I just took my nail gun and started to nail this board to the wall. After I got the plywood up, it was time for me to add my popular boards. So the first thing that I did was I had to mark off where I needed these to be cut on the left side. When I marked that off, I just took it to my miter saw and cut my pieces. So keeping it renter friendly here, instead of nailing these to the plywood, I am going to be using my heavy duty hot glue gun here and I am going to glue these pieces to the plywood. And the glue sticks that I used were the Gorilla um, glue sticks because honestly, once you put that glue on here and you glue it onto the plywood, it is not coming off. So I glued both the top and bottom pieces and the bottom piece is perfect because I wanted this to be as flush as possible to the trim and this helps it out having this little popular board at the bottom to attach my other vertical boards to. So before I added the last little piece of popular board to the top, I had to fix this side here. So all I had to do was add a piece of wood and I knew doing it this way would be easier than having to trim off my board and try to do the measurements to cut it right. So I did it this way instead. So I got the measurements, then I took my jig and I cut out the piece that I needed and I popped that piece right into place with my nail gun. Okay, so after I got that done, now it was time to work on the vertical boards for this wall. So since I had that little piece there that I needed to cover up, I had to do this a little bit different. And so the measurements that they were spaced out from each other was a little wonky, but it all worked in the end. So I started by having that one piece on the right side, which I needed anyway to cover the area where I cut that notch out. And then I started to place the boards onto the wall to the point of where the outlet was so I can know how I can make this look as spaced out correctly as possible while covering that particular area. Once I got my spacing down, the next thing I did was I started to mark where I want to cut these onto my miter saw. Not only did I mark the sides of these, I also marked the top. So after I was done cutting, I would know where to place them back. The next thing I did was I started to work on the top trim piece. So I used a one by two by eight foot board for this part. And first I just marked off where I wanted this to be on the top here. And then I also measured it out too. So I'll make sure that it is a correct cut when I take it to my miter saw and cut this piece out. So once I got this piece cut to the correct size horizontally, I needed to cut it the correct way vertically. So I just took this piece that I had previously cut out and I marked where I needed to cut on this board and then I cut that out on my table saw. The next step was adding these popular boards vertically onto my piece of plywood. So to do that, I'm going to use my liquid nails this time instead of using my glue gun because like I said, if you use that glue gun and you stick something on there, it is stuck. It's not coming off. It is there. So I use my liquid nails so I can have that wiggle room to kind of straighten these out if they were crooked or anything like that. You can definitely use a laser level for this part or you can also just use a leveler to help you. And once I got all of those pieces put up on the plywood, I just let this dry overnight. So the next step was caulking. So I was a little nervous about this. I don't know why I was so nervous to do this, but it's pretty easy to do. So the first thing you wanna make sure you do is you want to cut 
the tip at an angle and then you also want to have some water with you so when you do start caulking the sides you'll be able to kind of smooth it with your fingertip so I did that to all of the uh, pieces that were attached vertically and then I also did any areas that just needed to be cocked so now I started to prep all of my wood for painting so the first thing I did of course was sand everything down so I sanded any rough areas that I had to make sure that this was nice and smooth and then another thing I did since I am using wood is I needed to prime just certain areas which it technically was like two or three areas um, and honestly, I didn't even have to do this because the paint that I'm using, which I'm going to talk about in a second, um, it's like a one coat thing and you really don't even have to do that. But since I was using wood, I just wanted to go ahead and prime this one area that had the wood knots because I didn't want any bleed through. So to do that, I'm like extra precautious. So I put shellac on there first and then I put a shellac based primer on there which my favorite one to use is the Zen Zero 123 and then I let that dry and after that it was time to paint and so after that I totally wasn't finished when I said I, I was done but I just taped off the areas that I did not want to get any paint on with my painters tape so for the paint I took another trip to Home Depot and I had to choose and decide on what color was gonna look good with the wallpaper that I was gonna put on the top of this wall. And that color that I chose was Solstice, and it's by PPG Paints, and it's a part of their Timeless collection, and I am in love with this color. So the good thing about this paint is that it is a new formula that they have created, and it is washable. So if you have kids, this is perfect. It also will go on in one coat, but since I am going to be painting the wood, I was gonna need to use two coats for the first coat acting as my primer. So this paint has a wear resistant finish and the color that you choose is the color that is going to be. And honestly, this color takes on so many different looks, is, which is what I love the most about it, because it looks blue, it looks green, and then it can look gray. I love this color, it's so beautiful. But um, yeah, it's, this is a really, really good paint and stain resistant and I just love this color. And of course, I'm gonna have this color down below for you because it's amazing. All right, so now since I finished painting the bottom of my wall, which, oh my gosh, I love this color. I love that color. Um, now I'm going to start to add wallpaper to the top. So the wallpaper I'm using is the same wallpaper that I have on my fireplace and it is a removable wallpaper. So before I started to add this wallpaper to the wall, I had to, of course, get my wall ready. So I removed everything that was on there. So once I got everything removed, I unrolled the wallpaper and then I rolled it back up starting from the bottom, if that makes sense, and rolled it up. So when I start from the top, when it drops down, it will be the correct way up, which you can kind of see what I'm talking about because what I'm saying it makes I feel like it doesn't make any sense. So to start adding this wallpaper, I started from the left side first. I did this one panel and then I moved to the right. So I did it that way because I literally only had like one and a half roll and that half roll was like scraps from when I did my fireplace. And I honestly used this for something else too. So I was working on just a little bit of stuff here, but two rolls would have been, like two full rolls would have been good for this wall. So anyways, I just started to add everything on here, working from the left, right, then I went to the middle, and it all worked out in the end, and this was just very smooth to add to the wall, and it's totally removable, which is a plus. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that. So you just put the drill on the nail, tighten it, and then do it in reverse. So smart. <laughs> <laughs> so the last little thing that I did with the wallpaper of course was I started to trim off any excess that I had and then I also worked on the little smaller areas like here on the right side that I needed to cover and that was it. And I just love how both the top and the bottom just came together so well. So the last, last step of this total transformation of the wall is adding the trim. 
So I've already done the right side and now I'm working on the left side and all I have to do is mark off where I need to cut on the left side and then also where this light switch is, I just marked on the sides so I can know where I need to carve out this section so that it'll be flush on the wall. To do that, I just used my rotary tool and I used the ball tip and I just started to carve that area out. So once I got that done, I just took my sander and I sanded both of those pieces and then I stained them. So I did my favorite stain combination now, which is golden oak. And then you use sun bleached and it is the perfect stain combination. I love it. So I did that and then it was a time to attach these to my wall. So to attach that trim piece, I'm just using my hot glue gun again. And this was perfectly okay because I put that wallpaper up there. So when I did press this down, if there was some glue that was to come up, you know, from the back, from me pressing it down, it would be on the wallpaper and not the actual wall. So I just attached this again with on the right side and also on the left side using my hot glue. So finally we get to the moment we've all been waiting for, which is the reveal of this wall. And here it is. I absolutely love how this wall turned out. You can honestly do a project like this in a weekend, especially if you know what materials and all that stuff that you're gonna be getting. All in all, I love how this wall turned out. The paint color that I chose is amazing and I absolutely love it. And I will definitely be using this color again. There were a few bumps in the road, but that's what happens when you are doing a DIY project. All the materials that I used, I will have them linked down below. This is not gonna be the final look of this space. Again, this is going to be my office area. So if you wanna see that video, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below to let me know what you think and I will see you in my next one. Bye!